everyone. Welcome to this episode of Race Face Driver Updates. I'm Tom Baker. This week's show begins about 100 miles north of this brand new Race Face set inside the Race Chaser Media Mooresville, North Carolina studios in a little town called Altamaha. That's where the Cars Tour gathered last Friday night at Ace Speedway for the 125 lap Race at Ace. Adam Lemke and Minnie Tyrell were both running strong on Friday, spending the majority of the main event within two spots of each other on the track until Tyrell was spun from behind and had to go to the back of the field. Lemke stayed in the top eight for virtually the entire event and made a bold move in the race's final laps to wind up with a nice fifth place finish, his second straight top five in the series. Tyrell rebounded nicely as well, charging back into the top 10, battling all the way through the event and walking away with a nice eighth place finish for his second consecutive top 10 cars tour outcome. To Monroe, Washington we go. That's where Bryce Bizanson was back in action in the Jefferson Pitts NASCAR late model at the Evergreen Speedway. Bryce qualified sixth. Early in the race, he was battling hard when he tangled with another competitor, causing him to spin. Officials placed Bryce at the back of the field, and he settled down into a nice rhythm, passing his way all the way back to an eighth place finish. That was his best of the season. Joe Valento made his debut in the Kelly Byers Racing Midwest Truck Series car with nitro lubricants adorning it for the first time, entering the Joe Shear Classic at Madison International Raceway in Wisconsin. Nitro Lubricants, as I mentioned, made their debut as a partner for Valento, so excitement for this race was high. He practiced well on Saturday, ended up second fastest. On Sunday, he qualified fifth, and he was right in contention until a driver behind him tried making it three wide and spun Joe into the wall. He pitted for repairs and did return to finish the race in the 23rd position. Cassidy Hines jumped back into the quarter midget division last weekend, competing in the two-day duel in the desert with the Roadrunner Quarter Midget Association. On day one, she finished third in heavy world formula, fourth in unrestricted animal, and seventh in heavy 160. On day two, she finished second in Heavy World Formula, fourth in Unrestricted Animal, and sixth in the Heavy 160 division. Colby Sokol climbed back aboard his 600 micro sprint for a mile high region event at the I-76 Speedway. It was his first ever non-wing start. He finished fifth in his heat, started on the pole for the feature, and finished third. Joey East just keeps on winning, whether it's in a junior late model or his midget. This past weekend, he jumped back in the midget at the Madeira Speedway and won practice, qualifying, and led every lap of the feature to pick up the checkered flag. Jaden Walbridge had a nice run over the weekend as well at the bull ring at the Las Vegas Motor Speedway. With a car that was better on longer runs and having to pass his way to the front, Walbridge kept his cool and ended up with a strong third place finish right behind the two leaders. Jesse Love was also at the Las Vegas Bowling over the weekend, racing with the Spears SRL Southwest Tour Series in his Nate Clower Motorsports prepared super late model. Among the fastest all week long, Jesse started fifth in the feature, and got to second very quickly before contact with another car closed up his exhaust port and caused his car to lose power, forcing him to fade back and eventually out of the race. Brian Henderson was in competition at Mid-Ohio's sports car course this weekend. He led the event for a while at the start, but ended up eighth due to pit strategy and weather. Sheldon Creed ran Friday's Gander Outdoors Truck Series race on the Monster Mile at Dover, and he too led that event for a while, but ended up spinning on a restart and then later was collected in a crash. Sam Mayer finished second and 11th in the twin 100 lap NASCAR K&M Pro Series East races at the South Boston Speedway in South Boston, Virginia over the weekend. That will do it for this week's Race Face Driver Updates. 
Have you missed any of our previous episodes? No worries. You can catch up just by going to raceface.tv on demand. As always, we encourage you to support local racing in your community. We'll be back next week with more from your favorite race face drivers. Now get out there and make it a safe and successful racing weekend. Until next time, I'm Tom Baker. Thanks for watching.